In this video, I'll show you how to create simple meshes and how to animate them with geometry nodes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a plane. And now we're gonna slide over here, go to geometry nodes. I'm gonna close that window, I don't need it. And I'm gonna create a new geometry nodes. I'm gonna delete the group input though, because we don't need a plane. Shift A and get an icosphere. I'm gonna go with three subdivisions. You'll notice we don't have an icosphere here. So what we need to do is connect mesh to geometry. There we go. And now I'm going to get an extrude node. So extrude. Now this is a uh, cool, but also a bit, bit crazy. Um, so what we want is to get a Voronoi texture. And I connect color to offset. I'm gonna get a color ramp, connect that there. You notice the more black there is, the less of this extrusion there is. And the more white there is, the more extrusion. So I'm going to first bring down the white to a gray, then I'm gonna bring in the black. Now that looks pretty cool there. I think I'm actually gonna up the subdivisions on the icosphere, that looks better. I think I'll change this from linear to B-spline to get some more variation. That looks nice. Now, I'm going to get a mix RGB, put it there. I'm gonna get a math node and put that there. Connect color to the first value and change the second value to minus one and now change the add to a multiply. Um, so I'm connecting a new color ramp and I'm gonna press delete to reset it. Now I'm gonna change linear to constant and bring that in. And now we've got some pretty cool geometry. I think I might bring this down a little bit more even. That looks good. Now I'm going to create a join, join geometry and I'm going to get a circle, mesh circle, connect mesh to geometry. The first thing I'm going to do is get another extrude node. I think I'll bring up this radius here. Whoa, there we go, something like that. And you'll notice it's not extruding. And the reason for that is that this circle here does not have any faces and it's only extruding faces. So I wanna change faces to edges and now we're getting some nice extrusion. So now I'm gonna create another one, change this to 0.5. And now, instead of edges, because we don't want this crazy thing here, we're gonna change that back to faces. Maybe that's a bit too much, How about 0 0.05. That looks good. And now let's create another extrude and get another Voronoi. And connect the color to the offset, just like before. Now I get this craziness here. So let's get a subdivide node so you can have a bit more detail and let's get a color ramp just like before i'm gonna drag this out so we have some more space select the color ramp press delete to reset it and just like before adjust the color ramp until you think it looks good that looks about good to me so now let's get a new node distribute points on faces so you'll notice our beautiful ring is gone now and it's replaced by all these little things on on top of it and what these are is their locations basically and what we can do is we can assign something to those locations so let's get an instance instance on points not instance two points instance on points all the points went away so let's go over here and connect this extrude mesh to instance and it's a little crazy again so if you click and drag on the scale it might take a few tries you'll select all of them so let's just select them all and select 0 0.05 to see that seems like more or less the right scale but there's way too many of them so let's bring down the density significantly 0.1 that looks about good but we want our our ring right so let's go to this node here right before the distribute points on faces and connect the mesh mesh to join geometry you'll notice our points are gone 
but the truth is they aren't but all of these little things these rings are inside of the mesh and we don't want that so let's get a transform node plug it there and change the z to let's try 0.25 it looks about good i also think that these rings are a bit too thin i'm going to get this transform node and duplicate it and see this line here where the uh, extrude mesh goes to the instance on points so i'm going to connect this transform node I'll bring this up for more space let's change the z value to 10. that looks good oh and i'm going to remove this movement there now that looks good there's just one issue we want these rings on both the top and the bottom of this disc i'm gonna get another transform node i'm gonna connect instances there like that connect geometry to join geometry so let's change it this to negative 0.25 and now we have rings on both sides now we're gonna want some materials on this thing but we don't want the same material on the whole thing how are we gonna do that so what we're gonna want to do is get a set oh, not say set material node and we're gonna connect this to there right after the extrude mesh there and we're gonna duplicate it and we're also going to put it on the extrude mesh there and we're gonna duplicate it again and put it on the extrude mesh there and the extrude mesh and we want two materials one for the main sphere and the main ring and another one for the discs so let's go here a new material and let's call this lights and this will be for our discs here and so let's apply lights and then we want another material but this one's going to be a bit more complex so I'll just use my real-time materials add-on to add it. And I have other tutorials on how to create complex materials, so yeah. But anyway, I'm going to go to the other set material nodes and change those to grid metal. So if we go to shading here, I don't need that window or that window. And I'm gonna change this to rendered, then go to cycle. This will be good enough for now. We're on lights here, and I don't need this principal, principled BSDF. I'm gonna get two nodes an emission node and connect emission to volume. I'm gonna change that to a blue. And I'm also gonna get a glass, connect that to the surface and about 0.25 on the roughness there. That creates this really cool material. So we have these cool materials, but we still need some lighting. I'm gonna to go to layout and create a area light. And I'm gonna press G. Y and control. And you can see how it snaps to the grid. R, X, 90. Oh, that's the wrong way, but I could just press Shift R and repeat the action. Now I'm going to scale this up, so press S and control until it looks about right, like that. And I'm going to change this to a square to a disc. Maybe scale this up a bit more. And now I'm going to change this value here to 3D cursor so that now you can see when I press Shift D. R and Z, it rotates around our thing, our 3D cursor. Right, forgot the name. Um, and now if we press 90, we've rotated it by 90 degrees. Now I'm going to press Shift R, and that repeats that action. And so now I'm going to press Shift D, X, and Control until it's in the middle there. R, Y, 90. Again, the wrong way. So press Shift R until it's the right way. G. Z, control, there. Now, I could do the same thing again. Shift, D, R, Y. This time I'm gonna do 180. Now I've got some lighting here. Now if we go to rendered, it's lit a little bit. Now I don't want the background to be this gray, so I'm gonna click world properties, click color, make it black. There's a short intermission to remind you to keyframe the like button and maybe subscribe so that I can get a smooth line on my analytics again. I think that this sphere here needs something more to it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to geometry notes, click on it, I'm gonna bring this out a little bit, and I'm going to get a delete geometry node. And it's deleted our entire sphere, which we don't want. So I'm gonna duplicate the Voronoi texture, connect color to selection. And it hasn't done anything yet, so I'm gonna get a color ramp. And now you can see the more, I'm gonna click that button so we can see better. The more white there is in the color ramp, the more or the the more geometry is deleted and i think that the scale of this texture is a bit too much so i'm going to bring that to one 
So if I go back to uh, layout, I'm gonna add another light. And this is gonna be a point light. And I'm gonna click on this light icon and, and enlarge the radius, something more like that. And I'm gonna change this color here, maybe something like that. That looks cool. And maybe make that brighter. So now I need to add my camera. So I'm gonna go back to solid view, shift A, add camera, and press G, X, control, bring it out there, press N, go to item if you're not already there, and change the rotation. So I'm gonna change the rotation here to zero, 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 and now I'm gonna press N to remove the panel again, and click this spyglass icon here. Add object constraint, track to, take the eyedropper and select the point, and now the camera is always facing the point, no matter where you rotate it. I'm gonna move the camera out a bit further. G, X, control, and I'm gonna move it up. G, Z, control. Maybe I'll change that to instead of 1.5. But we want the camera to move in a circle around the disc. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna press Shift A, mesh, circle, S, and control until the circle is at the area of the camera. I'm gonna move it up. I'm gonna select the camera and then select the circle. Press Command P, set parent to object. Now I can click the circle, press R and Z. You can see it rotates our camera as well. I'm gonna bring up this panel, click that button so that we're, we're sure that we're at one. Press I, insert rotation. Then go to the end at 250 and then press the right arrow key. So we're at 251, then press R, Z, 360 insert rotation. Now, we're gonna, now what this will do is make it so that we rotate 360 degrees over the course of the animation. But there's a problem. You see, Blender by default will change the keyframe type to Bezier, if I'm pronouncing that right. And what that means is that at the middle, the an it'll animate the fastest, and at the edges, it'll animate the slowest. You can see it a little bit. And so what we need to do to fix that is right click, go to interpolation mode, and linear. You also might notice, why is the keyframe one frame behind the end of the animation. The reason is that we want it, since this keyframe and this keyframe are the same, since it's zero degrees to 360 degrees, we want this frame to be one frame behind this one so that it animates seamlessly. Now, let's animate the geometry nodes. So go to geometry nodes, select our object, let's go to our camera, and you'll notice we don't have a timeline here. So let's put the cursor in the corner of the screen until we see that plus sign. Click and drag up. But this still isn't a timeline. So let's click this icon and change it to timeline. We'll close that. And now we want to animate these nodes. But how are we going to do that? Well, we want to change these textures here. So I'm going to go to 3D to 4D. And what that gives us is this W value. It might be hard to tell what it's doing, but it's changing the shape of the sections, basically. Just click that button, press I, now we're gonna go to the middle, 125 in my case, change this to 0.5, press I again, go to the end of the animation, and one frame ahead, press zero, press I again, right click, linear. And if you didn't see your keyframes, what you need to do is make sure you have both your object and the texture selected. And now we're gonna do the same thing for this texture. So change it to 40, beginning of the animation, I, middle of the animation, 0.5, I, end of the animation, one more, zero, keyframe. Now, right click, interpolation mode, linear. And now, you can see that it's animated. You can go to rendered view to see this a bit better. Now, I don't really like the color of the lighting. So I'm gonna click the lights, go to this light icon, and change it to something else. In my original animation, I actually added some motion blur and some compositing, and I'll make some tutorials on how to do both of those in the future.